Hello Overwatch fans and welcome to the Overwatch Weekly Meta Analysis for the week of March 28th to April 3rd. My name is Icarus and I'm here to bring you everything that happened in this week's Overwatch Meta. This week, I made some minor changes to the tier list. The old fairly used tier has been replaced by highly used and the old underused tier is now fairly used. This is to better represent the actual play amounts of these heroes as a 40% pick rate which before would be underused would still mean the hero is showing up at least every second game. As well as that, I've also implemented up, down, and neutral arrows on heroes to show if they change tiers. Also, the graphics for the portions that include gameplay have been altered slightly. Let me know your thoughts on these changes in the comments. As always, I ask you guys for any feedback you have on the series. This series is ever evolving and I am constantly trying new things, so any feedback you have for me is much appreciated. That said, I'd like to thank everyone for the awesome feedback on all of the views in the last video. Seeing that has been absolutely awesome, so a big thanks to everyone. I'll be sure to implement the ideas you suggested after last episode. As stated before, I have teamed with Captain Planet of PlanetOverwatch.org. You may recognize Captain Planet from his meta reports and infographics on the R Overwatch subreddit. Together, we are sharing in responsibility for collecting our shared data sets, although we both use slightly different tiering. His write-ups and infographics are really entertaining and I've enjoyed reading it for a while, so I'm excited to work with him going forward. You can find a link to his meta report in the description of this video. As well as Captain Planet, I'd also like to give a shout out to Gozu Gamers and Grokton. I use gameplay in these videos to add some spice to segments that would otherwise just be a screen with stats on it. Since I don't have access to the beta, I have to get my gameplay from elsewhere. Gozu Gamers runs a weekly tournament, and since I now work there, I have permission to use clips from the weeklies for these videos. For parts where Gozu Gamers clips didn't fit, a YouTuber by the name of Grokton has given me permission to use his gameplay videos. He makes pure Overwatch gameplay with no commentary, so if you just want to watch some Overwatch, check him out. A link to his channel will be in the description. With all of that out of the way, let's get into it with the tier list. Here's the tier list from March 21st to March 27th, which was last week. Now, here's the updated tier list for March 28th to April 3rd. Before I go in depth on the tier list, I'll explain how I sort heroes. Both offense and defense are considered sides as well as both teams on King of the Hill. If only one match of a defense or payload map is played and a hero is picked once on offense throughout the entire match, they will have a 50% pick rate. If they are picked once on offense and defense or twice on either side, then that will be considered a 100% pick rate. If they are picked three times across both sides, then that will be greater than 100% pick rate. Essentially, a hero's pick rate is determined by how many times they are picked compared to how many sides appeared. If you watched last week's episode, you should remember me saying that the meta was incredibly balanced. The majority of heroes trended towards an even pick rate, everyone was played at least a few times, and there were no particularly high played heroes. I closed the video on a high note, saying it seemed like the meta was becoming much more even. Unfortunately, that was not to last, as you can see here. This week there were not one, but two uber heroes, Lucio and Tracer, the split between fairly used and rarely used is much more prevalent, and there was a hero entirely unpicked. These changes are largely due to a new composition that has emerged from the remains of Orbital Destruction. The strategy is made up of two Tracers, two Soldier 76s, a Symmetra, and a Lucio. As with Orbital Destruction, it is immensely popular, though not to the point where it is being ran every single time. This is why there are still many heroes in the fairly used tier, whereas in Orbital Destruction we only saw a few. However, Tracer is still largely popular outside of that strategy, as teams have begun to run at least one of her as standard in most lineups. Notably, Soldier 76 also saw another increase in play. As I mentioned last week, I felt teams were becoming more comfortable in Soldier 76, and it seems now they are comfortable enough to use him regularly. Because of this, he has also become a crucial component duplicated in the most popular strategy I mentioned earlier. Overall, this meta is not very balanced. Most heroes saw a decrease in pick rate, and there are two heroes in the uber tier. I would argue that currently it is still an improvement over Orbital Destruction, largely due to the fact that most heroes are still more picked than they were during that time, but it could be a lack of practice with this new composition from teams. Most heroes still maintain their current niche positions, but the rise of this new composition has decreased variety in strategies and hero picks significantly. With the tier list wrapped up, it's time to take a look at the popular strategies of this week. This week, we didn't see too many completely new strategies emerge, as teams tended to refine the many new strategies from last week into the most optimal ones. While I talk about these strategies, there will be footage of them playing on the screen. Without further ado, let's get started. This strategy, which the community has dubbed Cancer Comp 2.0 due to its similarity to Orbital Destruction, consists of Double Tracer, Double Soldier 76, Lucio, and Symmetra. 
Teams will also swap out the second Soldier 76 if they need someone else, but double Soldier 76 is standard. It's similar in nature to the Orbital Destruction strategy, but instead of overbuffing mobile offense heroes, they simply receive Symmetra shields. The playstyle is that both Tracers get the shields from Symmetra and both play highly aggressively, constantly flanking and causing chaos so the enemy never has a moment to rest. While this happens, the Soldier 76s will establish a solid backline defense pushing a payload or holding a point, dealing constant damage with a good long range damage output. Lucio provides auras that allows the team to keep fighting for a long time. The strategy makes it very hard for a team to set up a solid defense or offense as they are constantly under pressure from the tracers and the long range damage of the soldier 76s. This strategy tends to be run on both sides as it is highly flexible. This strategy, which I have called Donkey Kong Country due to the use of two monkeys, revolves around two Winstons. If you followed the competitive Overwatch scene for a while, you should remember the weekend of the double Winston meta. That is essentially what this is, although it isn't run anywhere near as much. The strategy is to have the Winstons leap onto the back lines to create space and chip enemies, as their ability to shack shields and general tankiness makes them very hard to bring down. This strategy is typically ran with an AoE offense hero like Pharah, as they can finish off the heroes the Winstons brought low easily. Typically, this strategy is ran on offense as it is a more aggression based strategy, but it can be ran on defense where it is more shield focused. This strategy, which I have dubbed High Flyers due to its playstyle, revolves around mobile heroes such as Mercy, Diva, Farah, and Winston. This strategy mainly emerges on the second phase of Hollywood, where the payload passes through the town section and the first section of Watchpoint Gibraltar. The idea is to use heroes that can easily maneuver onto high grounds and control them to gain a map control advantage. With the high grounds taken, it is a lot harder for either team to put on pressure, and the team in control of them gains a large advantage. Because this advantage can be leveraged by either side, it is typically ran on both of them. That's it for this week's strategies, so now it's time to take a look at each hero individually. Tracer was the most picked hero this week, sitting in Uber with an overall pick rate of 119%. Tracer saw huge levels of popularity this week as teams began to run her in Comp 2.0, which featured two of her. Teams highly value her mobility, as it makes her very effective at flanking and causing non-stop chaos which prevents teams from setting up for a proper defense or offense. Due to her low health pool, she is frequently ran alongside Symmetra, who gives her shields that boost her health. In fact, Tracer is likely the most picked hero due to Symmetra, as otherwise she is too easily killed off due to her low base health. Overall, she is an incredibly effective flanker that is very difficult for teams to deal with, and two of them just makes it even harder as they can trade off if one needs to back out. Lucio was the second most picked hero this week, sitting in Uber with an overall pick rate of 105%. Lucio has always been a very popular hero, but this week we saw him return to the state that was typical of the first few weeks of the second beta. As always, he is seen as the core support for his ability to passively provide buffs to everyone while still being able to fight. Due to this strength, teams have once again begun to double up on him as it ensures that his buffs will always be provided as well as allowing teams to have his ultimate up for almost every fight. As well as this, he is also a core member of Comp 2.0. Symmetra was the third most picked hero this week, sitting in overuse with an overall pick rate of 83%. With the rise of Tracer also came a rise of Symmetra, and her core position in the popular Comp 2.0 has contributed to that. Teams value Symmetra highly for her ability to provide an extra 50 health to any heroes permanently. As well as that, Teams also like her teleporter for its ability to let a team return to a point quickly after a lost fight, potentially saving it. However, most of her focus is on the shields, and this is likely why we see heroes such as Tracer so popular. Tracer was balanced around her low health pool, with her mobility making up for it. By giving her an extra 50 health, she suddenly becomes a lot harder to kill as she is a bit too tanky for the mobility she has. Many professional players say the issue of Tracer's popularity lies in Symmetra, and although her pick rate does not show signs of truly overpowered, the fact that she is almost always ran with a Tracer is a good sign. Despite her overwhelming popularity, she still sees less play on offense than defense as she cannot set up turrets easily on offense. Overall, Symmetra is still highly popular due to the buffs she provides. Soldier 76 was the fourth most picked hero this week, sitting in highly used with an overall pick rate of 69%. Last week, Soldier 76 saw a significant increase in pick rate as teams became more comfortable with him and found a spot for him in the meta duplicated in the crossfire strategy. This week, he saw a further increase in play as teams refined how they wanted to use him. He has become a core part of Comp 2.0 where he is often duplicated. However, the second Soldier 76 is frequently swapped out on offense as teams look for more mobile heroes for that side. 
Overall, he is a quite popular hero as teams have begun to favour him for his solid damage output. McCree was the 5th most picked hero this week, sitting in highly used with an overall pick rate of 51%. McCree was always a fairly popular hero, but as a composition that doesn't fit him rises once again, he has seen a decrease in play. As well as that, Soldier 76's increased popularity has led to a decrease in his play as teams like him for his solid damage output, a trait he shares with Soldier 76. Despite all this, he is still highly picked as Team CM is a core hero in most compositions. Reinhardt was the 6th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 49%. As another tankless strategy arises, Reinhardt again sees a fall in play. However, despite not being popular in Comp 2.0, he still maintains a high pick rate and his position as the core tank, largely due to his flexibility. His skills synergize well in any lineup, meaning that outside of the tankless Comp 2.0, he is a core hero for any team. Winston was the 7th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 45%. Winston saw another increase in pick rate this week, as teams began running him in the double Winston strategy again. As I mentioned earlier, the ability to put on good aggression while also being tanky and providing a shield is a strength unique to Winston, and running two of them makes him even harder to deal with, similarly to Tracer. He is much more popular on offense than defense as the double Winston strategy is more popular there and his strengths generally suit the aggressive offense better. Mercy was the 8th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 39%. Mercy saw a small decrease in pick rate this week due to not fitting into comp 2.0. However, as with Reinhardt, outside of that composition she is seen as a core secondary support. This means she is a popular pick but is liable to being replaced if a team needs something different. She is frequently paired up with Pharah due to their synergy, but she also stands on her own. Zenyatta was the ninth most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 39%. Zenyatta has essentially maintained his position since last week, as teams are comfortable with his nerfs and still see use for him. He has seen a small pick rate decrease due to not fitting into Comp 2.0, but is not major for a hero that received as substantial a nerf as he did. Currently, Zenyatta is running strategies where a team wants to buff an offense hero to make them harder to kill. Overall, he is in a good place, consistently ran, but not at a huge amount. Widowmaker was the 10th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 36%. Last week, Widowmaker was more popular on offense than defense, but now she has settled to fairly even play on both. Widowmaker remained in much the same place as last week, as the squishier targets that she preys on easily continue to dominate the meta. As well as this, she does not detract much if implemented into a lineup, meaning she can easily be ran almost anywhere. Occasionally, teams will even use her rather than a second Soldier 76 in Comp 2.0. Despite all these benefits for her, she's also one of the most risk-reward classes as an underperforming Widow provides nothing, meaning teams only run her when they feel confident. Reaper was the 11th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 35%. Reaper saw a small rise in play this week after a few weeks of being relatively underplayed. There are a few reasons for this. One is that since he hasn't been seen in a long time, teams aren't as prepared to deal with him, making him a better choice. The other is that a rise of Winston has led to a rise of him. Reaper is a natural Winston killer as he tears through the shield and can kill Winston himself easily. Reaper is almost always seen when a Winston appears on the field, which is why we saw much of him this week. Pharaoh was the 12th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly used with an overall pick rate of 27%. Pharaoh remains in the same position as she always has. A core hero ferial maps like Dorado and Numbani almost always paired with a Mercy. In particular, she is a core hero on offense for King's Row. Teams have also begun to run her alongside double Winston, as her AoE damage could clean up heroes that have been chipped low by Winston's Tesla cannon. Zarya was the 13th most picked hero this week, sitting in fairly use with an overall pick rate of 21%. After seeing a lot of play last week, Zarya's pick rate has more than halved as teams refine her playstyle. Almost all of her picks have shifted to offense, where she maintained a fairly even pick rate and she is no longer duplicated. Teams now use her largely for a damage output and graviton surge. She deals tons of damage with a well-charged beam and graviton combos well with many abilities. Genji was the 14th most picked hero this week, sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 19%. Genji has fluctuated a lot in pick rate for these last few weeks, but as teams now prefer a second tracer over him, he sees a lot less play. His role as the mobile offense has been entirely overtaken by Tracer, but he occasionally sees some play instead of or alongside her. Junkrat was the 15th most picked hero this week, sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 16%. Junkrat is similar to Pharah in the sense that he sees most of his play on specific maps. Junkrat thrives on maps that are more enclosed as his traps and grenade spam are harder to avoid. 
The majority of his play occurs on King's Row and Dorado for that reason. As well as that, he is also defense favored as spam is a more effective strategy on defense as it can poke enemies out and force them back from the point. For that same reason, the popularity of Soldier 76 has lowered his pick rate as Soldier 76 also has good poke. Torbjorn was the 16th most picked hero this week, sitting in rail use with an overall pick rate of 11%. After seeing decent amounts of play last week, Torbjorn's pick rate has halved and it may even be inflated as the team ran a 5 Torbjorn defense in one game, contributing to a larger pick rate. Similarly to Zarya, his decreased play comes from teams refining their playstyle for him. He is back to much the same position as before, being used for turrets on defense. Diva was the 17th most picked hero this week, sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 10%. Diva remains mostly unchanged in where she is played, maintaining her position as a desperation last point defense pick. However, she was slightly ran outside of that this week on maps like Watchpoint Gibraltar and Hollywood with hard to access high grounds that she can make use of. Hunzo was the 18th most picked hero this week, sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 7%. Hunzo is still not a highly popular hero and actually saw a decrease in picks this week. Of the two snipers, he is the less preferred, as Widowmaker is much more versatile in her ability to pick people off from a long range. Of the little play he does get, most of it is on King's Row, as he can make good use of the enclosed areas and good sight lines there for scatter arrows and dragon strikes. Roadhog was the 19th most picked hero this week sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 4%. Roadhog has fluctuated between a high spot in rarely used and a low one for the past few weeks, so it's not surprising to see him maintain this position. His playstyle is entirely unchanged as well. Teams will use him to get pickoffs and disrupt defenses for a first point push and nothing else. The majority of his play comes on Numbani because of this, so he can pull down heroes from the otherwise hard to access balconies. May was the 20th most picked hero this week, sitting in rarely used with an overall pick rate of 3%. As with last week, May is used in the same role as Diva as a last point desperation pick. Her ice walls and ability to make herself invulnerable make her a decent last point holder, but her lack of damage, mobility and healing means she doesn't see much play elsewhere. Bastion was the least picked hero this week, sitting as our only never used with an overall pick rate of 0%. Last week, I said that teams were experimenting with Bastion, though we may see more of him next week. I was certainly wrong, as Bastion has become our first unpicked hero in several weeks. His lack of popularity is likely due to teams knowing how to punish him too well, making him far too risky a hero to be picked, as picking him off makes for an easy push for offense or a precious extra few minutes of hold for defense. With all heroes covered, it's time to take a look at the big picture in the overall summary. Last week, I said the meta was incredibly diverse, but this week, I can say that is no longer as true. While many heroes maintain the pick rates they held last week, many have also fallen and overall there has been a decrease in pick rates. This is entirely due to Comp 2.0. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when Orbital Destruction was meta, one incredibly strong strategy forces heroes that don't fit into it out. While Comp 2.0 may not be as popular as Orbital Destruction was, it is still popular enough that some heroes pick rates are hurting for it. It's not all bad of course, as Soldier 76 did not see that much play until the strategy emerged, but that small benefit does not outweigh the downsides. Two heroes sitting in uber tier has never happened during my entire time doing the meta analysis, and is a clear sign of an overpowered strategy in the meta. However, I don't think the issue lies with Tracer, despite her being the most picked hero in the meta. I believe the issue is with Symmetra. For the past 4 weeks, Symmetra has been one of the most picked heroes, and there's a simple reason for it. Her shield is just too good. A lot of heroes are balanced around their health pools, and Tracer is a prime example of that. She is the most mobile hero in the game, but she also has the lowest health pool to make up for it. Symmetra is able to boost that by another 50 health that regenerates as soon as Tracer hasn't been hurt for a second. As well as this, the shield lasts until the hero that has it on dies, and there is only a 1 second cooldown on it, meaning Symmetra can apply it the moment she sees the hero again. 50 health may not seem like much, and for a lot of heroes it isn't. It's when an already hard to kill hero like Tracer or Genji gets it that the problem arises, so they become even harder to kill. For Tracer especially it's an issue, as an extra few milliseconds of staying alive can make all the difference on her. It's not all doom and gloom though, as despite the dominance of Comp 2.0, many different strategies are still viable. Teams still run the traditional strategies that feature McCree, Reinhardt, Mercy and Pharah fairly often, there are certain maps where those are even preferred over Comp 2.0. Whether or not this will continue to be true we'll have to wait and see about, as a similar trend occurred when Orbital Destruction was merging, but went away the next weekend. 
It could be that Blizzard nerfs the Metro this week and the strategy is destroyed, or it could be that a team develops a counter to Comp 2.0, as they did with Double Winston all those weeks ago that prevents it from being ran. Right now, the meta is an incredibly unstable point. Left alone, Comp 2.0 could become the dominant strategy, or it could be nerfed or countered and would go back to a versatile meta again. Or maybe it will just be another strategy that teams like to run. We'll have to wait and see for next week, as for now it's too early to tell just how dominant the strategy will be. One thing's certain though, the high end of the meta is not very balanced now with Lucio and Tracer and Uber. With all of that, I've been Icarus and this has been the Overwatch Weekly Meta Analysis for March 29th to April 3rd. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, and if you want to keep track of these easily, you can subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week.